Young Dolph was out early that morning. Early, when he left the gas station, he did not go straight to Makita. So we have receipts to clear that up right now. Somebody that work at the car wash right next to it seen 901 Trigger Tray and Raven in the passenger seat of the Ford Explorer right before Dolph. And it was like, because you know how um, Raven is big and she eat a lot of food and they went to a breakfast place. It's a yellow sign. If you look in the camera, if you look back at the footage of that Marathon gas station where Dolph was last seen breathing, you look to the left, pause it, pause it right there. Look to the left and you see the yellow sign. That's where Raven was eating like four plates of breakfast that morning. And somebody seen her because it took her. It was so much food that kept coming. And the line was getting big that this person went on a break from the car wash to go get French toast sticks. And they saw Raven with guess what? So like, what's Raven doing this early? Like, usually people like them, they don't be getting up at around that time. And so, because that store at, they said, just from themselves, experience, the store on Airways, Makita's Cookies, never has customers in it. It's, mm -hmm. it's never been a customer in there unless it's one of their people. Young Dolph did not go to Makita's. He looked over at the yellow sign to where the car was. He saw the, the white Mustang and trigger tray truck. He looked because he thought he saw somebody that he was familiar with. Exactly. He was expecting Raven and them to be ready with the 100K. But when he seen the car Raven always be riding in that Ford truck with 901, he got, got eerie. He knew something. It was like he was looking like weird squinting. Like, you know, like, is that is that so and so? Like, he was looking like that. And then guess what? Three, three days later, the same guy from Memphis seen Raven and Maurice walking in the bank with one of them big old checks like they had an envelope and it was and on the envelope it's one of them it's like no return address and it's got the stamp on the envelope that mean it's a check that mean it's like a big like a settlement check so they got this check and they walked in and in the bank and cashed it and they was walking out laughing and they had safe uh safety security security deposit boxes that they was walking out with them back you know how anybody with a business knows when you take the money from the business into the bank you get them blue bags them blue pouch bags you put all the money in and then you use that to transport to the bank they cashed so much money on that settlement check that the dude witness seen him them walking in with and he even seen that it said Raven Winton on the um, envelope. He was right there next to her, standing in line, cashing his check. It was a Friday. And he worked at the car wash, and they give checks. It's one of them places where they still give checks because it's an old car wash. And, you know, Memphis is one of them. It's not a – Memphis don't have no Teslas riding around. They still got places with old trucks and car washes where people that work there get paid in in uh, checks. And when the dude went and cashed the check, he looked at the envelope because he seen, he smelled the dreads from Raven. And he said, oh, I know that smell. That's, the, that's that dirty ass cookie place. So he looked at the envelope and he seen, it said Raven Winton and, and to, to Raven Winton and to Maurice from insurance. And it was stamped up with no return address. It looked like official, like one of them ones where you got to tear the sides off and tear the top and then it exposes a check. So he seen that. And as soon as he seen that, he went back outside to his car to get his phone because he got an Android. He was charging it. And when he came back out, he seen them walking out with the blue pouches with all the money in it. And he seen Raven high-fiving Maurice saying, finally. And he heard Maurice say, 
that he could get two more Lincolns with this bread. The only reason is like, the only reason people think that Makita Raven set Dolph up and had something to do with it is for the simple fact that she made an appointment with the landlord downtown Memphis four days in advance when she did the promotion thing for Dolph when he had the cookies in his hand that was around the time where she talked to the landlord when she asked the land when she asked the landlord for all the information and signed the closing documents it was already in play people say Raven knew the day that that happened to Dolph, the day that they boxed Dolph in. That was the day that three days after that, they're going to move. And if you look at actual reality, you can't just have an incident happen in your store and then all of a sudden jump up and just have another store already ready. You didn't tell anyone you had this store ready. You didn't give anyone forewarning, come tomorrow, the store will be having a grand opening soon. You didn't say this a week in advance. You said this a couple days after, as if you found the place, you found the landlord, you signed the papers, you went to the, basically the open house meeting so that you can be able to even put place bids on the, like the storefront. Exactly. And look, did y'all hear what happened to the landlord now? Let me let me give you the breakdown. Okay, so look, my nephew, he work at a car lot in Memphis. He work at Lincoln of Memphis. He saw Maurice with that goofy hat he always wears come in. And he was joke. He came in to buy a brand new Lincoln Navigator big truck it was like 85,000 he come in he got it all in a cashier's check where he get that money from my nephew he done seen him he was he asked him a question because I told him look if you ever see any of them cookie people you need to ask like them right questions so he he chopped it up he spoke with Maurice and he Maurice slipped up and this is the nail in the coffin marie said he was gonna paint his um lincoln camo colored like and then he said he was gonna sell cookies out the trunk he's like yeah i'm gonna paint my lincoln camo color and sell Dolph cookies out the trunk basically dissing Dolph, and my nephew called me immediately to tell me this ASAP because he was like, we we going to run his, his credit right now. And he was going to give me all the information on Maurice. Everything, birthday, everything, date, you know, apartment, address, all that. So now, so now guess what happens? Because you know how Raven moved to Dallas? So Maurice was getting ready to move too because the feds is about to bust him in the Rico case as the ringleader with Yogati, as the co-ringleader, Maurice and Yogati. Maurice bought the Lincoln for 85000 with a cashier's check and it was a black Lincoln. Later that night, he was seen on ring video camera creeping in the neighborhood of the old white landlord from the Airways store. The store that they got boarded up now. That lady was exposing the whole cookie shop operation because she, she saw made it. She saw the video. She seen the video because she got her own security system that's better than Makita's. And the difference is, is that she got the app where she could record it and save it DVR. But they got ADT and they got to pay to do that. And you know how... Uh, Makita's and um, by now you should know that instead of paying to have better evidence, they'll rather pocket the money for their own greed. So now Maurice is caught on camera trying to break into the landlord lady house and he had a Draco with him. 
caught on ring doorbell camera coming out that new Lincoln he bought for $85,000 with a cashier's check that my nephew that work at the car lot seen him doing. That's it. He's busted now. And Maurice, he was telling the car lot people that he was finna move to uh, Pennsylvania. He was going to live in Pittsburgh because Maurice's twin brother live in Pittsburgh. The same place. And he and, and over there. They got a whole different business there that they be doing the same thing when the business be they they get it. They meet a rapper. They meet some famous person. Right. They get them to get their foot in the door and all these big businesses like the Kroger and get them that distribution deal. And then when they ready to update to a bigger venue, a bigger restaurant building. They take down the person that helped them and burn them down and claim the insurance on the old building and keep all the money and make millions. They do that. P Maurice twin brother does that in Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh. They try to catch Wiz Khalifa on the same thing. They do it in Memphis with Makita's cookies and they do it with a jewelry store in Atlanta. That's why Maurice is trying to get all these people's chains snatched and that's why he got the paramedics to take the chains off of Dolph and so look the moral of the story is do not trust any people who try to work at some innocent little shop but behind closed doors they run in a biggest scheme in the underground it's a lot of business owners who be doing a lot of underground activities and now it's like 2023. So you can't even, you should be able to know if them people don't have an actual franchise, like a, like a vision dentist place. Like if they not having a tire shop or like something like that, if they selling, if they selling, um, Valentine's day flowers and Halloween costumes, then, you know, they doing something out the back door. If they selling cookies and little muffins and things like that, then what's really going on is that they got they hand blood on their hands knee deep in the game of some whole other operation that be taking heads out. And that's basically what happened. So, look, you have to continue to watch our videos to learn more of the truth. Everything you heard to this point. Now we're going to clean it up and stick with okay here's the facts here's what's proven on the news here's what's proven in the streets now let's put the storyline together now let's get the phone records from snoop bands and from the mpd to makita's now let's get the 911 call from the laundromat throw it in there for you now let's get the family dollar video throw it in for you let's get the marathon security let's get the manager that from the marathon manager from family dollar and shell they all gonna be in the series in the docu series so when the documentary come out it's gonna have the managers of every store that was involved all the surveillance we're gonna buy it and we're gonna give it all to you with the timeline and we're gonna make sure we get the phone records and we're gonna buy the cookies and the catch from Dolph phone to get everything that was tracing and tracking him that day. Subscribe to the channel.